the mole. In chemistry, the mole is often given somewhat of a bad rap because it is perceived as being difficult to understand. But actually, it's not terribly difficult. But even if it were, its robustness is such that it's, it's still quite easily usable, even without a detailed understanding, much as one can readily use a car without understanding the details of how the engine works. But nevertheless, let's take a look under the hood of this thing we call a mole. And to do so, let's consider one atom of hydrogen. Now we know from looking at a periodic chart that one atom of hydrogen weighs one AMU. Remember, an atomic mass unit is the mass of a proton or a neutron. And since a hydrogen atom only has one proton, then its mass is one AMU. It is useful to know when trying to understand the concept of a mole that one AMU is in fact a real mass and that mass is actually 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. And so there we have the weight if we had a balance that was so precise that we could actually weigh the grams of a single hydrogen atom. But in fact, no such balance exists. This number is far, far too small. But we have a very good way to scale this up, and that's what's needed to scale a number up so we can actually weigh the material out in practice. And that number is called Avogadro's number. So we're going to scale this up by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We will explain its significance of why we choose this particular number. But suffice it now to say, if you take this number, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24th grams, and multiply it by this number, you wind up with none less than one gram. And so let's now translate that. So one AMU is equivalent to one gram, or will give you one gram when scaled up by Avogadro's number. So having multiplied this number, 1 AMU, by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, to get 1 gram, that means we necessarily, at this point, must have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms. Now, the reason I didn't write it here just below this is because this is a very large and a somewhat clumsy number and we want a way to make this simple and so by convention what we have done is we just defined 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything as one mole so what this means is I now have one mole of hydrogen atoms. It may seem awkward to say that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is actually equal to some arbitrary name called a mole, but you've actually been doing this all of your life using a name in place of a number. And where you have done this most commonly is when you have 12 of something, you call that a dozen. And indeed, you probably have a little problem saying, oh, I understand if I had 12 hydrogen atoms, I would have one dozen hydrogen atoms. 
but for whatever reason, it becomes difficult to think. If I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, I can't call it a mole. But indeed, that's what we've done by convention. So, here's what we have. There's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of things in one mole of those things. It can be atoms, it can be molecules, it could be golf balls. And that is exactly analogous to having 12 things and calling it one dozen. Let this now look at what we've just developed here. This scale up from the atomic level up to the macroscopic level using Avogadro's number. Let's look at that concept in view of a periodic chart. When you see a periodic chart, and here I've shown hydrogen has an atomic number of one and it has an atomic mass of 1.01. .01. I'm just going to consider this to the ones place for simplicity now. What this means is for every one atom of hydrogen, it will weigh one AMU. So let me write that. So one every atom of hydrogen will weigh one AMU. And this is a conversion factor that might prove useful. But you can also look at the same uh, periodic chart, look at the same information, but you can also read it this way. For every one mole of hydrogen, you will have a mass of one gram. Notice the digits one to one stay the same. All you're changing are the units in the scale up. Now let's consider carbon. You can make the same interpretation for that. You can read what you see on the periodic chart as for every one atom of carbon, it will have 12 AMU of mass. Or the same information will read for every one mole of carbon, you will have a mass of 12 grams. And so you can see the microscopic, we can talk about things at the atomic level, or the macroscopic, we can talk about things at the gram level. What is so important about this is I can actually go to a balance and I can measure 12 grams of material. I can actually measure this. And so there you have it. We've now developed two important terms for information we can get off the periodic chart. You get the mass of a particular atom, one atom of material, and that's called the atomic weight, or sometimes atomic mass. And you also have the weight of one mole of material, and that's oftentimes referred to as the molar mass. Note that the digits are exactly the same, you get this information from the same place, from the periodic chart. The only difference is, in one of these, you're working at the atomic scale. In the other one, you're working at the macroscopic world, the world in which you and I live. And with that, we will close it, and we will move on in future videos of using these pieces of information, these conversion factors, the conversion factors known as atomic weight and molar mass in other calculations.